So, if you've worked with Unity for any real length of time, you've probably become pretty familiar with this loading bar. And you probably hate it just as much as I do. What is it doing though? Well, let's have a look. So we're gonna create a real quick new Unity project. And once that's finished loading up, we're gonna have a look at the contents of this directory. So let's see what Unity has created for us. We're gonna have a look here at the library folder. In particular, we care about the script assemblies. In here is where all your code goes. Now, why is there so much stuff here already? Well, if we have a look at the packages and see what Unity has got for us in the manifest, you'll notice that there's actually already a lot of stuff here. All of these additional dependencies are included with our build. So what happens if we just remove all of them? Well, first, Unity deletes the folder and rebuilds it. But if we open it up again, we'll see there's nothing in it. So when there are no dependencies, there are no files in our script assemblies. Now we're going to make our own file. And let's see what Unity does. You'll see here that it's now created an assembly-c-sharp DLL. And that's where our new Hello World file has been built and compiled. That's what that bar is doing. It is compiling into that file. If you don't believe me, we're going to have a look at .peak, which will let us look inside that DLL and see its contents. So if we have .peak here and we drag in this assembly-c-sharp that we've got, and we open it, you'll notice under the root namespace, we have our new Hello World model behavior. And that's kind of cool. We can see what the code is compiled into. But here's the interesting thing. This isn't the only assembly-c-sharp on my machine. If we now just hide everything away for a second, bring up another tool called search everything, what we can do is we can do a quick search so apparently I have 39,000 DLL files. If we do a prefix here, assembly, dash C sharp, we'll now find all of the assembly C sharp DLLs on my machine. In this case, there's a thousand of them. But you'll notice a lot of these are actually in my Steam library. And you might even recognize the name of some of the games. We've got Cuphead, Aragami, Cluster Truck, Enter the Gungeon, Firewatch. These are all Unity games that have built their own assembly dash C sharp. And if we do the same thing, here we can see all of the files that have been built into that DLL. Now you'll notice some of these are names of assets. These are all scripts that have been built into that same DLL. Now why is that? Why is it not their own code? Well, because all of these exist in the root namespace. This is what Unity does for every script that has not been placed into its own DLL. Which means that anytime your code recompiles, so too does all of that other stuff because it gets compiled into the same DLL. What's interesting though, is if we pick a slightly older game, like Thomas Was Alone, you'll notice it's a lot sparser. There's a lot less code in here. Uh, that's kind of interesting because it still has more code, obviously. This can't be all of the scripts. There's more than four or five files, but they're not in this DLL. When this game was written, it was written using a language that Unity used to support, which was called Boo, Boo Lang. And in that case, the code isn't built into that particular DLL. So that kind of highlights that we can move code out into its own DLLs that are not the ones that we're using. If we bring up our own uh, script assemblies folder, we'll go back to just removing the, the one we do have, our hello world. And Unity will once more delete that and clear it out. Now what happens if instead, we now have our empty directory, if we create a new folder, and we start putting our scripts in here. What we can do is we can add what's called an assembly definition. And what this does is it defines a certain chunk of code that is supposed to be built into its own particular location. So now when we put our scripts in here, Unity are going to build this particular chunk of code into its own file, which means whenever you change the contents of this directory, you're not rebuilding the entire C-sharp assembly DLL. And if we put stuff in the root again, it will yet again create another assembly dash C-sharp. And all the assets that you download that haven't put themselves in a DLL will be lumped alongside you in there. So that was interesting and all, but why did we bother covering it? Well, currently your workflow is most likely you write a script, Unity builds it for you into a DLL, you press play, you test your game, you make some changes, 
you do it again. And that's fine, but the problem is, oftentimes the building and testing can take up a lot more time than the typing you're doing, which means making small changes requires this really long cycle of development of just waiting for it to rebuild and press play and test and get to the part of the game to test what it's doing. Well, in theory, the code is just lines of code, and you should be able to test that without having to run a whole game engine just to check that it works. So personally, I like to do the building myself. So rather than letting Unity do it, which is using something called MS Build, the exact same tool that you have, you can build that externally and take the output DLL and just drop it into Unity. And so that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to take that external DLL, we're going to drop it into Unity, and then we're going to automate that process so we don't have to do it ourselves every time. Catch you on the next one.